in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When brother saw me, he said, Will you come and talk tonight? We thank the Lord though. Because we welcome the invitations of the Holy Spirit. And we want what happens in our lives to be from the Holy Spirit. Truly, I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what I will say to you, but I believe the Holy Spirit will comment, will talk. And as we ask in our prayer, will the Holy Spirit to preach always. And every time we come to the house, the house of the Lord, for Lord to lead us, for the Lord to inform us, give us a message, give us a comfort, give us what we need, always give us solutions, answers as we ask from Him every day in our lives. We shall read from the book of Isaiah in chapter 58. Dear Lord, verse 1. Chapter 58, Isaiah. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. If they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordin ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinances of justice that take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls, and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast you find pleasure, and exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate, and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day, to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush, and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your regard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. We thank the Lord, my brethren. And we, my beloved brethren, we want in our lives to be, what, we, what the last verses say, we want to be able to call out and for the Lord to answer, for us to cry, for Him to say, Here I am. We want, my beloved brethren, to talk to our Lord, and for the Lord to answer us. We want to come in a close relationship with the Lord. And many times, we found ourselves encountering the Lord when we come to church, many our brethren, and we come to the house of the Lord to hear the Word of God, the Holy Word, in that moment, and I say in a personal experience now, I remember that the Lord is here also. And all day, I was in a race, but a race in which I ran, but I could have ran that race with the Lord. We thank the Lord though, this doesn't happen all the time. A man, many times, tends to forget. He tends to be indifferent. And he labors, labors, labors. And he does not see any results. And he says, what's happening in my life? And now the prophet comes here to explain to us a few things. Because spiritual law and in what God has to reveal to us are precise, specific, and if we walk in simplicity and trust in the Lord, we can have results. And to have results in our everyday life, in our personal lives, in our job, in our church, in our family, so we can see the hand of God act in our lives. Many times we pray, we ask from the Lord, but we see no results. 
and when we don't see results, the enemy of our soul comes there to use his cunningness and his whispers in our ears and for him to say things in which he says so nicely, present them so nicely that God is not listening to you, that God is not next to you. And tonight, could we believe if the enemy of our soul comes and tells us that the Lord's hand has shortened? No, my brother. The Word of God tells us that the Lord's hand has not shortened. The Lord has not become weak in our lives, but the Lord is prepared to be strong in our lives. He is prepared to be mighty in our lives and with great results. In my life, can God do wonders? I have a very difficult petition, and it could be a health problem. My petition could be so serious that it is very difficult. May the Lord intercede. But God wants to inform us tonight that the hand of the Lord has not shortened. But God is standing before all of us so He can be strong in our lives. To take our problems, to take our weaknesses, our little faith and through all this situation, all this weakness that we can be in today, God wants to be strong. And we thank the Lord, because we today, my brethren, come before the Lord in simplicity, with grace and with courage, to ask from the Lord for, to reveal to us, what is it, Lord, that we must correct? What is it, Lord, that we must remain in, so you can work with us, use us? And we want, my beloved brethren, for God, as it says, cry out loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, tell my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice, that take delight in approaching God, and we, my brethren, we want to have ordinances of justice. We ask in our prayer to do the righteousness of God, to stand how God wants us to stand. We want to do all the will of God. We want to stand where the Lord wants us to stand. We want to do all that we hear from the Word of God. We want to stand pleasing before the Lord. We want to be as God has planned for us to be, each one of us, we all desire this, and I believe, if we ask ourselves in our hearts, do you want to stand how God wants you to stand, do you want to be how God wants you to be, do you want to do all the righteousness of God, I believe that all of us will say, Amen, but many times, even though we do want this, even though we ask for this, even though we try, something happens, and it does not progress doesn't come out like this if you permit the expression what we want. Many times I've heard I want to be just but I cannot. On the contrary, the more I try to be just I am unjust. For example, I heard Brother George said once I do not lie and the next day God Prove to him that without the grace of God, you cannot. That simple thing, not to say a lie, you can't even stand in that worthy on your own. And very nicely, God taught him that the next day when he went to his work, he said the first lie, second lie, third lie. So God can prove to him, not our weaknesses, God doesn't come to prove our weaknesses, but He comes to give us His doctrine. And many times the doctrine comes through our sins, through our transgressions, our mistakes. All this, all these circumstances, circumstances with the Lord, God comes and gives us His doctrine. Don't worry if you have fallen. Through this mistake, God will come and teach you and tell you that, look, I know that you are weak and you do fall. 
and make mistakes, but you can now, through my grace, through my power, which I will give you, says the Lord, you can walk now and be strong in your life. And God comes through our difficulties and mistakes to give us this nice doctrine. We thank the Lord. God doesn't come to lift up His hand and to be hard against us. He comes and teaches us and to teach us, even though we want, through our mistakes, through our weaknesses, for us to be better, for us to be how God wants us to be, and to accept what God t is telling us, that even though we have sinned, even though today He's telling you that you have fallen in sin and God knows your mistakes, your sins, it doesn't say it's that He can accuse you, it doesn't say to make you out guilty, even though we do stumble in many things, but through these difficulties, through these transgressions and iniquities, how we fall, God comes and tells us, I want to teach you. If you want to stand, if you want to remain in this doctrine, if you want to correct your ways, if you want to do all that God is telling you to do, let me now teach you and tell you that in what you cannot do, even since you permit God to help you and to act in your life, God will act and will help you. We thank the Lord. But man who many times believes that on his own he will be able to correct his ways, he believes that on his own he can change his life. He goes before the Lord, asks, 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 and gets no answer at all. He asks and keeps on asking and has no answer. And he wonders why. Why did we fast? They say, and you have not seen. We have afflicted our souls and you take no notice. And I've seen many people who love God, but they are in another doctrine, another theory. They have said, they've convinced themselves that if they make their body suffer and deprive their body of many things and do things which are very difficult as far as living is concerned, that God will listen to us. God then will act. God then, I say it in exclamation marks, full so for us so He can act in our lives. I had a very nice conversation lately with a man which I believe is sincere and God will help him find the right way, the Word of God, what the Word of God reveals. And because he loves God a lot, he said, I feel the need to go, to enter into a monastery and live in there and devote myself to God there for nothing else to touch me, nothing to touch my body, to have nothing to do with anything but give my soul, my body, to the Lord. And I understood very well the need that man has many times to devote himself to God, but seeing the difficulties of life, seeing how man in this world, it is difficult to walk. I believe in that way, he will come to devotion to the Lord. And so we talked enough, and I said, you cannot put your life, especially your body, in a place where it's deprived for you to reach God. You must leave your inner self, your heart, your soul to the Lord. You can't start from your body to bow on your body if your heart you haven't given to the Lord first. And people believe in that way, depriving their bodies of things they think they can come close to God. And they fast. And they fast in a way which is very hard and harsh, but they have no answer. But this could happen to us also, my brethren. We might come to situations difficult in our lives, ask from God, but we haven't left a place in our hearts so God can come and live to give what He has prepared for our lives. We don't accept this sometimes. And we make the place smaller and smaller, the place in which God wants to live inside of us. God wants to come and live richly in our hearts. He wants 
to enter our hearts and to work to give us firstly what our inner selves has needs of he cares to fix the person who is inside of us so you can receive him the day of the rapture and he cares a lot God about our inner self and it says in fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate, and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? And God comes now to change everything in which man knows. And as we all knew then, until one point in our lives, we knew different things completely different things and we walked in a complete different life and one point God came to change all of these things and he came to reveal to us and say how do you look now how do your eyes see now how does your heart act now how is it you God God wants to put inside of you and you want to change your life how will you act now? Through your own might or through the might of the Holy Spirit. And God wants my brethren for us to learn to take out, out of our heart, all this that's annoying, all this that tempts the heart of man. And sometimes something enters your body and ruins all that you, what you are feeling. That's how the heart of man is, the inner self. Something comes and annoys you. Something comes and tempts you. Makes you sad. And then everything is lost. Everything is lost then. And many times I say, Why? Why is all this lost? All this purity? All this peace? This holiness that God places in our hearts? From one word. From one annoyance. From something. What is this? What is this that we permit to ourselves? Here we must resist. Resist and not let the enemy turn noise with such little things. With such small things which come and ruin all that is beautiful that God has made. And the heart of man hardens. And there are a few muscles in our bodies when you touch them with something, they harden, those muscles harden and become very hard. And the heart of man sometimes is like this, becomes hardened from something very small, from something that disturbed the heart. And the Holy Spirit is saddened, the Lord is saddened, because from these little things, many times, we lose all that God has given us that's beautiful in our hearts. And God comes down and tells us, is this the fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? And all these tryings, bodily tryings, is this what God wants? All this labor in which a man can labor for in his life and to devote all his life is this what God wants? And what God has put in my heart is that many times, my brethren, the grace of God from the law hasn't got a very big space between these two. In other words, it is easy to leave from the grace and enter law. I'm not talking about a law in which a man will put in your life, but the law in which you will put in your life. And the law comes, the law of the world, the law in which the world so very nicely and smartly wants to give to you, and of course, with the strength of the devil, can present to you things in such a way, and for you to accept them in your life, and for you to start putting bonds in your life, on yourself, and even on your family and whatever is near you, for you to want to bind it 
and to make you walk in another way, not the way that God and the Word of God says. And we ask, my brethren, and we suffer, and we ask and we don't receive, because the Lord, through our heart, has asked completely different things. He hasn't asked for us to discipline our body without first cleaning our inner self. That's what God cares about. And it says, now stop looking at these things now. Stop looking in a way that you knew and let me now, let me now reveal to you what you have in your heart and reject these things so you can walk how God wants you to walk. And the word of God continues. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? We thank the Lord, my brethren. To lose the bonds of wickedness. Not to let anything ugly be. Not only in the heart in which is near you. For well, those people who come with you, your family. But you must lose the bonds of wickedness of your heart. For you to take out of your heart, if you have any wickedness, anything that burdens you, for you to come now before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to wash my heart today. I want to clean it out. I want through my heart, out of my heart, everything to come out. I don't want anything to burden it. I want to be clean, Lord. Not because I'm awaiting in that way. Me, man, to succeed in something. But see, my brethren, this action, God will come and work in your heart. He will come and work with you. He will come and give inside of you what you need so you can help yourself, help your soul, so you can help your walk so the love of God can come and abide richly inside of you. Man's heart hardens when bitterness enters, division enters, anything that's annoying comes and tempts the heart of man and the love of God leaves. The peace of God leaves and the love of man is troubled. And then you say, what's happening to me? Why am I in this situation? Why, with this annoyance, has my life ruined? All my walk has ruined my holiness is ruined. My relationship with God has ruined because I go before the Lord and I complain. Instead of talking to God and saying, Lord, help me. Help me. Take all these things out of me. Help me empty myself so your grace can come, so your love can come and abide in my heart. We thank the Lord, my brethren. These are plain, easy steps, but we must taste these things in our lives. We must ask from God to come and act in these things and to see them in our spiritual lives. God will give us many things and I believe He will bless us very much so if we remain in what the Word of God tells us. If we stand and as the times are difficult and the world becomes wilder and wilder, God has many things to give us but we have to give Him what abide in our heart and burden man. They burden us, my brethren, in our walk. And we stop walking. Or maybe we walk slowly. And in that slow walk, then we will find us weak and we come and throw us down. We must work with our hearts, my brethren, these later days. We must think and take to account what is it that God, with His grace, we must work at so this can come out of us for us to lose all that's in our heart, to lose it, to cut it, to get the sword of the Holy Spirit and any not bond that's inside of us to take the sword of the Holy Spirit with the grace of Christ and to cut it and to reject it, to dissolve it. God is waiting for this from us. And I believe that to us all, God is working. Working. This trial in our lives, I could say, God wants. God wants to exalt us. He wants us to take us high. 
not in blessings, man's blessings, not blessings which is for our everyday lives, but He wants to lift us up in our spiritual life. And I believe, as I hear various brethren, that each one of us, He gives specific trials, specific lessons, so we can be exalted, so we can go on, because the Lord is laboring, so He can be revealed to us even more and more, to reveal His Word to us more and more, and you know, the more the Word of God is revealed to us, more burden is on our shoulders. God wants to be revealed in our lives stronger. He wants to reveal more things to us. He thinks and feels that we know little, and He wants to lift us high, but for us to go on, for us to, to climb the Lord's mountain. But first, we must let our heart, ourselves, to take out all that hinders God in working. Everything that's evil, everything that's difficult, whatever ties and hardens the heart of man. And the heart will not open before the Lord. The heart is not filled with the Holy Spirit. And that hinders the Lord. And I believe God wants to reveal this to us. He wants to say to us, My children, leave these little things that hinder me to work with you. And I believe in my heart the Lord is saying this to me now. For us to ask grace from the Lord. For us to ask grace and to say, Lord, we stumble in many things, but you are the mighty one. Your hand can help each one of us and all together, all the church, for us to be able to go on. For God revealed to us all that the Lord has prepared because we are waiting to see the wonders that the Lord has prepared to do in His people and in continuation in the world with His people. We thank the Lord. And to ask from God, my brethren, to give us more grace. And we do need more and more grace as the world becomes wilder and wilder and the world becomes difficult. I heard the day before yesterday, the plans of the devil will be more progressive, difficult. And I believe that we've all tasted this, that the enemy is working now with more evolved plans. We hear now that people are making smart bombs and the enemy will use smart weapons permit the expression so he can fight God's people. Cunningness. Cunningness he will use and he will come and act in the heart of man. He will come and act in the heart of each man specifically. And there the Lord wants to act also today to His people to work with the heart of His people. We thank the Lord. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. We thank the Lord. And many times, the Lord, what we have to do, the Lord brings it in front of us, before us, our work. God, what we have to do, God brings it before us. Yesterday, I had a query. I had it for a long time, and I thought, and I talked with the Lord, and I said, Lord, what is the work of each one of us, for each one of us? That's how I understood it, that God gives you something to do. It finishes, and then gives you something else to do, and then that finishes. There is a movement, and He doesn't want man to sit. And when you care to work for Christ, and we see in our lives, He who wants to work, He finds a job. It might not be the job that he wants it to be, but even for a little while he finds something to do. And I heard yesterday, Saturday morning to be precise, 
the Lord spoke to me and I heard the work in which you have to do, God will bring it before you. What you have to do, God will bring it before you. And I said, will I be ready? Will I be ready when the Lord gives me what I have to do? Will I be ready? And if I'm not mistaken, it says in Titus, Paul says, Be prepared for every good work. What does he say this to him? Because in one point of time, what you have to do will come before you, and he has to, you have to be ready to do it. And we, my brethren, we must be ready to do what God will bring us, bring before us. And here it says, to share your bread with the hungry and to bring into your house the poor. And this shows a readiness because many times the poor, you haven't programmed that when he comes before you and you might have one and you must cut it in half to give it to him. If you have two, God has blessed you and you are. And it's easy for you to give them but if you have one, you must cut it in half. When you don't have and many times you must take off what you're wearing and give it. You must be ready for that, my brother. You must be ready, my sister, so you can be able to do the work in which God will give you to do. What you have to do, you must be ready to do. And many times we think that the work is what we see in church. But that's not always the work of God, what's in church. Of course, it's very important because is necessary for the people of God. But many times the work comes when you'll be on your own. You'll be far away from your brethren. You'll be far away from the church. You'll be far from the people of God. But then that moment you must, like a prepared soldier, like a child of God, to be in readiness so you can do every good deed. And look at yourself. Let's see ourselves, my brethren. Let's see myself. Am I ready for every good work? Am I ready, prepared like an ambassador of the Lord to show the grace of God in my life and to be worthy, stand worthy before the presence of God? We must know that wherever we stand, wherever we might be, God, the Lord of all powers, His eye is upon us. And I've seen overseas the readiness that the ambassadors have to represent their country. Each ambassador represents his country. And you know something, ambassadors don't have rest. They don't say, oh, it's night time, early in the morning or midday. Whatever moment is needed, they must represent their country. And you know something, many times, I've reached a country and it's late at night. And that moment, this man must take care of us that we are in that country with our needs or whatever. Because that moment, he represents the government in that place. And I say, Lord, once I saw a man who was working with great zeal and I said, Are we good ambassadors of the Lord? Do we represent the grace of Christ with this zeal? In that way, let's ask for it, my brethren. Let's ask from the Lord for Him to act in our hearts. Let's ask from the Lord to make us ready, prepared for every good work, so we can see the grace of the Lord, so we can see the power of God in our lives, to be able to see that the Lord uses us as a useful tool and a good tool, which brings fruit. Then it says, your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. But is it important to be healthy and to shine in this world if I, in my heart, take everything that's evil, wicked, take everything out that burdens me, but all these things are happening for my life, then I will be a light and I'll have good health. Just think, my brethren, if you had a very good employee, you had a job, 
And he had a very good employee, a man who worked with lots of zeal. Worked. Deny himself for your job. What would you say for this man? Wouldn't you pray to God to keep him well? For nothing to happen to him, to be healthy, strong. So he can stand where you have him. Then the place, which is his place, so he can do good work. Just think, my brethren, of the Lord. Just think of the Lord when he has such nice tools in his hands. And with what zeal he will act in the life of each one of ours. And he will give us good health and blessings. And all that we need, God will give to us. He will provide. But for me to clean my heart, to be how God wants me to be, to be in holiness, God will give me health. We thank the Lord, my brethren, because that's what the Word of God tells us here. That's what the Lord of God tells us. It says that this shall shine like a light, and your health shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. I'll be righteous. I'll be able to do all the righteousness of God and be always prepared and I'll be ready for every good work. All these things if I always have in my heart cleanliness, if I just look to see that I am ready for everything, yes my brother, yes my sister, because the Lord will come and do all these things with us. God will come and prepare all of us so His work can be done. We thank the Lord. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your regard. And who now could do you harm, annoy you? What man would have the power if God is with you? The Word of God tells us, What man can be against you if God is with you? Who could come against you? A child of God, when the Lord is with him. The Word of God tells us, it's like touching, when you annoy a child of God, it's like touching the apple of the eye of the Lord. But you might say to me, are the things of God so simple? My beloved brethren, I believe the Word of God is simple, easy, but it is precise. And God wants us to do exactly what the Lord says. He wants to accept in our hearts what the Word of God is telling us. And then it says, Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and He will say, Here I am. And if today we want the Lord to talk to us, if you want today to get a specific guidance, above all, my brethren, let's ask from the Lord to comfort us. Let's ask from the Lord and say, Lord, comfort us. Comfort us so we can lose all the bonds in our hearts. Whatever it might be, we want to take it out. We want our hearts to be clean. We want our souls to be clean. We want ourselves to be clean. And then you will come and say to us, Here I am, my child. We will cry and you shall answer. You shall talk to us because... Not because we are worthy, my brethren, because the love of God for us is great. The love of God for man is great. Because God gave His only begotten Son and gave it for all on the cross of Calvary. We thank the Lord. We know the love of God for us is great. Let's not put obstacles. Let's not put obstacles in this nice grace in which the Lord wants to give to all of us. And as the Word of God says, let's finish with that, with this, that if we want today to increase the grace of Christ, there's only one way. The Word of God says that, to the humble, the Lord gives grace. If you want to increase the grace of God in your life, remain humble, remain humble. Say, Lord, I will remain humble. I will remain in what you have given me. I will take out of my heart. I will try with your strength and your grace. Take out all that I have so you can work. So you can prepare me. So you can upgrade me. 
so I can have good health, have your blessings, to have all you God that you have prepared for my life, for my way, for the way of all of God's people. May God bless us, my brethren. Amen.